Hi, I'm Rob, N1NUG. Today, I want to talk about my favorite ham radio band, and that is Six Meters. Now, the first reason I like this band is that it's open to all license classes. So if you've just passed your license test and gotten your technician ticket, you can use the whole band and do any of the modes that are allowed in the band. CW, voice, data, doesn't matter. You can even work FM repeaters on six meters. And we're going to take a look at all of that later in the video. Another reason I like this band is because of its interesting propagation characteristics. Now on one hand, it's a VHF band, so it's good for local communications up to 50, 60, maybe even 70 miles, depending on your antenna and the power level that you're going to use. In fact, I like to get on 6 meter sideband and rag chew with some of my local friends on a nightly basis. It's usually a pretty quiet band, there's not a lot of background noise, and a lot of times the band isn't open, meaning that there aren't other signals coming in, so we're able to rag chew for hours and not disturb anybody. But on the other hand, when the band does open up, it can get pretty interesting. You can work anywhere from up to a couple hundred miles away to thousands of miles to even around the globe sometimes. Six meters is also a pretty wide band covering about four megahertz worth of spectrum. So there's plenty of room on the band to kind of spread out and do whatever modes you want. Now, just like many ham bands, there's a CW and data portion of the band down low, right around 50 megahertz. And then there's plenty of room for sideband and even AM and we'll take a look at that later in the video. And then even at the top of the band, there's plenty of room for six meter repeaters. And we're gonna take a look at those too. So in fact, let me grab the camera, we'll get it close to a radio, and we'll start seeing what kind of activity is out there. First, we're gonna to listen to some highlights from a traffic net that I recorded on a six meter repeater. This repeater is located on the top of Mount Greylock in Northwestern Massachusetts. Now, based on the stations that I heard check into this repeater, I'm going to estimate that the coverage for this thing is about a 65 mile radius from the center at Mount Greylock. So based on that, this repeater is able to cover a good chunk of southwestern New England. This is N1XWS. Name is Corey. Located in Adams, Mass. I'll be your net control station for the Western Mass Emergency Net Berkshire section. This net meets every Sunday morning, 9.30 local time on the K1 FFK repeater on Mount Greylock with a PL of 162.2. I am now looking for any and all stations, with or without traffic. Please call net control. Whiskey one, Kilo Romeo X ray, name is Greg Bonzo, Massachusetts. Here is Kilo Charlie One, Oscar Kilo Delta, Todd in Westhampton. Here is Kilo Charlie One, Papa Bravo Quebec, Randy Hendon Match. This is Kilowatt Two, Lima Mike, Mobile, Bacon Hill, New York. Here is November One. Zulu, Golf, Alpha, Josh, here in Pennington, Vermont. Uh, Whiskey Alpha One, Zulu, Hotel Mike. Name is John, I'm in Pittsfield. The Western Mass Emergency Net Berkshire section would like to thank the Northern Berkshire Amateur Radio Club for the use of the K1 FFK repeater. And that is now secure at give or take 9.37 a.m. This is N1XWS Clear, 7.3. Next, I'm going to play some snippets from a weekly 6 meter AM net it takes place here in southern New England. Now this 6 meter AM net has been around for quite a while. I think they've been going for at least 20 years now. And you'll hear everything on this net from modern Icoms and Yezus all the way back to old tube equipment like Clegg's. Now one caveat before I play these snippets. This Icom 746 Pro has a birdie right at 50.4 megahertz where the net takes place. So you're going to hear a little interference kind of coming in with the signals. At the end of the section, I've actually tuned over to my Yezu 891, and that interference won't be as pronounced, but you will still hear a little bit coming in from my dishwasher that was running at the time. While you guys were talking, I was digging around in my parts, and I found a, a brand new... Brand new, never used 12-pin uh, Jones connector I can wire up for that uh, that Swan rig. It's a pretty simple slot bucket rig, but it'd be, uh, it'd be nice to, if it worked okay, if we could make it work. Or KD1SH, WA1LGQ, maybe it goes to Mike. I have no idea. Hey Bill, can I break in? Oh, of course. I just wanted to tell you the cool radio that I got. It's a marine radio, two to three megahertz. It's a Hudson American. A Hudson American? I don't believe I've ever seen one of those. 
I, uh, I've heard of them, but I don't know much of anything about it. And Larry, thanks for uh, giving me and Wayne the, the little little tour of the uh, of the facility there, the uh, the lab. Bob, I guess it's over to you. And uh, like I said, maybe this uh, maybe the next go around will be my last one. So over to back over to Bob. WB1GCM KD1SH. Well, I'll, uh, I'll turn it up to Larry uh, in Charlton, and I'm going to wrap it up. You can put the ribbons on it there, Larry. And uh... next, let's tune over to six meters sideband and see what we can hear there. The aurora, the northern lights were visible all the way down to 40 degrees latitude. I'll have to take a, take a, a little walk out in the med backyard sometime. Uh, sometime if I'm, up, if I'm up later at night, and pitch black out there and take a look. Bill, do you, have a, you must have a nice dark area. Uh, every now and again, I'll, I'll catch a wind. The space observatory thing goes by, and it's fun to watch. And one, how are you? And one GUS. Now, FT8 is popular on 6 meters too, especially for those looking for DX contacts. Let's tune over there and see what we can see. I don't have FT8 set up on my ICOM 746 Pro, so I've switched over to my SDR Play RSP DX running SDR Uno. And you can see we're getting some FT8 activity here on 6 meters, even though the band really isn't open today. According to QRZ, W5BN, who I heard up here, is 113 miles to my northwest. And as I'm sitting here recording this, you can see K1SIX is coming through, and he's working LU5DF right now. now of course, K1SIX is the strong signal you're seeing. He's about 85 miles away to my north. And LU5DF is in Argentina, and it looks like he made the contact. Too bad I don't have my transmitter set up. I might try and make a few FT8DX contacts here myself. So as you can see, there is FT8 activity on 6 meters. Maybe not as much as what you'd find on 20 or 40, but it's here. And it's useful to monitor this frequency to look for band openings when they may happen, since they are kind of sporadic and kind of rare on 6 meters. So I'm going to break in from the future here and show you guys that I do finally have my 6 meter FT8 transmit ability set up using my Elecraft K3 and that radio only puts out a maximum of 8 watts on 6 meters. I saw there were some stations coming in that were to the north of me so I turned my 5 element beam up to the north and as you can see I've worked a couple stations here already. I worked AB1OC who's about 65 miles or so to my northeast in New Hampshire and then I worked KB1JDX who's a little closer in eastern Connecticut. He's maybe, I don't know, 15 or 20 air miles away. The band was open yesterday and I had the antenna pointed south and was able to work a couple of stations in Florida and Georgia. Maybe if the band opens up today, I'll be able to make some more DX contacts. But right now, as you may be able to see on the waterfall, I'm getting a little interference from my washing machine that's running. So we're going to let that finish up and we'll try again later. When all else fails, there's CW present on 6 meters too. Here's a listen to some of that. Now, if you're a DXer, 6 meters can be quite interesting. It's one of the reasons they call it the magic band. One minute you can be having a rag chew with your buddy in the next town over, and all of a sudden the band will be open and you'll hear stations from thousands of miles away. Now, there's usually pretty good openings in the summertime, anywhere between, say, May and July. And then again, sort of in the middle of winter, sometime around January, we'll get some openings too. Now, because I'm filming this video in March, there's really not a lot of DX that I can show you right now, but it is possible to make contacts up to several thousand miles away. And the cool thing about DX on 6 meters is that you don't need a sophisticated antenna array to work it usually. You can work thousands of miles away with just 50 or 100 watts and a dipole on the roof of your house, or maybe even just a mag mount on your car. Now because I'm filming this video in March, there hasn't really been any DX, so I don't have any clips of any of that to show you. 
but it is there and if you're into DX this is a band that you can have a lot of fun on so there's a snapshot of some of the things that you can do on six meters now let's talk about some of the equipment that you might need to get on the air with six meters up to this point in the video we've primarily been looking at my icon 746 Pro. Now I bought this radio back in 2008, so 15 years ago now that it's 2023. And it's still going strong and working just fine on 6 meters and really all the bands that it covers, including 2 meters. Now if you wanted to buy a 746 Pro now, you could probably find one at a ham fest for around $500. Now on the ham specific classifieds, places like QTH or QRZ or maybe some of the Facebook swap and sell groups for ham radios. You may find that the prices on those sites are just a little bit higher than what you might find at a ham fest and you'll probably have to pay shipping too. Now of course the 746 Pro is not the only radio that covers six meters, not by a long shot. Pretty much any ham radio transceiver made in the last say 20 to 30 years probably has six meter capability too. Now if you're buying used and you see a radio you like just check the specs online before you make that purchase and make sure that it does cover six meters. Having said that, if you don't want to take a chance on a used radio and you want to buy something new, there's quite a few good choices out there too. Let's take a look at the computer and I'll show you a few of my favorites. So first up on my list of new radios that I would consider that have six meter capability is the ubiquitous ICOM IC7300. At this point, this thing is kind of like the Model T of ham radio. This radio packs a ton of functionality and is a good choice for new hams and seasoned hams alike. And as of the spring of 2023, it usually sells for somewhere around $1,100. You might even be able to find it for closer to 1000 during special sales like Dayton or maybe Christmas time. If you're looking for something a little more portable or something that you might want to throw in the car, then the ICOM 7100 is also a good choice. It doesn't have quite as many features as the 7300 and it doesn't have the nice color screen, but it does cover two meters and 440 in addition to HF and six meters. The only drawback for this radio as of March of 2023 is that it's currently not in production. As far as we know, the radio is not canceled by ICOM. They've just paused production due to parts shortages. Hopefully sometime soon they will resume production or maybe replace this radio with something new that they can get parts to build. I guess we'll see what happens as time goes on. If you're more of a Yezu fan, then it's hard to beat the value of the FTDX10. Now this is going to cost a little bit more than the 7300 from ICOM, but it packs a few more features that the 7300 doesn't offer. And from all reports that I've read, this thing has got a receiver that's hard to beat. Now, as of the spring of 2023, this radio retails for around $1,400 or so. And again, depending on whether or not you can kind of time it right with a sale, you might be able to get it a little bit cheaper. If you need to stay a little bit closer to the $1,000 mark, then the FT710 is probably a good choice. It offers a lot of the same features that the FTDX10 does, but the receiver isn't quite as good. It's not bad, it's just not quite as good as what's in the FTDX10. And that's why they're able to sell it at a little bit lower price point. Now, if you're really out of budget or you're looking for something for portable or maybe mobile use, then it's really hard to beat the value of the FT891. Now, I'm a little bit partial to this radio because I've owned one for a few years and I use it for all of my portable operations and it served me quite well for that purpose. I also have a temporary mount in my car for this radio so that I can use six meter repeaters during my commute back and forth to work. Now, of course, this radio has just a monochrome screen, no band scope, no waterfall, nothing like that. And that's reflected in its price, which is around $650 or so as of the spring of 2023. So if you're really on a budget and you want to get on six meters and HF, this radio is a great choice. If your interest in six meters is purely FM operation on simplex or repeaters, then the Alinko DR06T may be a good choice. This is a nice, small, compact 50 watt radio that can be installed in a car or you can use this in the shack too. 
Now, price on this radio is somewhere around $250, so it's a little bit pricey for a radio that just only does one band in one mode, but if you need 6 meter FM in a small package, this may be a radio that you want to consider. There's a few budget Chinese radios on the market today that also have 6 meter capability. Now, personally, I tend to stay away from those radios. I'm not a big fan of them, but that doesn't mean that you have to stay away from them. I'm not going to cover them in this video, but you can do some research online, and if you find one of those radios fits your needs and your budget, by all means, give it a shot if you think it's going to work for you. Now, of course, those aren't the only radios available for 6 meters, not by a long shot. There's so many options out there, there's no way I'd be able to cover everything in this video. So I suggest getting on Google and doing a search and finding something that you think is going to work for your needs if you're interested in getting on 6 meters. So now let's take a look at a few antennas that I'm using on 6 meters. Now these aren't antennas that you necessarily need to run on 6 meters. I'm just showing you this for inspiration and kind of reference purposes. The first antenna I'll show you is a Magmount mobile antenna. Now this is something I picked up at a ham fest for about five bucks. Now this is actually what I'd call a business band or maybe an EMS antenna that was originally intended for use between 40 and 50 megahertz. All I had to do was cut the whip down and it works great on the FM portion of the six meter band. So the next antenna that I'll show is my M squared five element six meter Yagi. Now admittedly, this is a bit of an overkill antenna, especially for my style of operating. But the reason I wanted to show it to you is because I got it for 50 bucks at a ham fest. Now when I first got it, I needed to replace one of the elements and fix the boom. It was just a little bit bent. But for just a small amount of elbow grease and a little bit of investment from the hardware store, I was able to get what I'll call a contester's antenna on a budget. Now this antenna is a lot of fun for working what I'll call local DX. You know, stations out to maybe 100 or 200 miles away that my buddies who have just regular sort of omnidirectional antennas can't work. It's a lot of fun for that. But when the band opens up and the DX is rolling, it works great for that too. Next, we're going to take a look at an antenna that was built by John, KB1OYB. This is what we like to call a six meter diamond. It's really just a full wave loop on sort of a 45 degree angle. The original design was kind of done up by Craig, KC1ELZ and a lot of the guys in our local ham group are running these and having a lot of fun with them on six meters. All I do is it's just wire through the corners, comes down to here. You could tape it if you wanted. I use two alligator clips, one for the negative, one for the positive. It assembles in 10 minutes or less. What's the tripod? Is I'll tell you what I think they are, that you put big audio speakers oh, like on okay. a stage but it's nothing but PVC pipe going from tip to tip this is Craig's pretty much of invention okay yeah we've just exercised the pants off of it building them and using them and they work and when you feed it down at the bottom here it's horizontally polarized right that's horizontal yep and if you want to vertically polarize it change the just You'd pull have to the wire, feed it up there. Pull the wire through. Oh, I see. You can and, pull it right that's through off. the clip. Yeah, because yeah. the wire's, it's not stationary, see? Yeah. In fact, that's why I showed it to you. That wire comes off, goes unplug, <laughs> and in five minutes, you got a kit yep. that you throw in the back of the oh, car. Oh, that's true, too. You can bring this portable if you want sure, to. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's a good idea. And it's nice. It sits here. Nobody bothers you. And it's 9 dB gain. Field day, you could set that up in five minutes or less. Yeah. And it's nice for a situation here where you can't have a permanent antenna. Correct. You can hide it under the alcove here if you want, I, or you can break sure. it down and put it away if you had to. Those are the antennas that I'm running on six meters, but the possibilities are endless. So this is just one of the websites that I found when I did a quick Google search for six meter antennas. As you can see, there's some other options here from homebrew to store-bought, dipoles to moxins. I'm going to leave a link to this website down below. I encourage you to take a look at it and do your own Google searching and see what you can come up with for antenna options. So as you saw, six meters has quite a lot to offer, especially for somebody like me that sort of almost prefers kind of local communications with my friends over making a ton of DX contacts. However, when the propagation is there, 
we can make those DX contacts too. I think you guys can see why it's become my favorite band over the years. Hopefully you'll get out and try and make a few contacts on six meters of your own. I hope you enjoyed the video. 7-3 for now, and thanks for watching.